Hey everyone, Shakaris here. Welcome back to Losing to the Shopkeeper, where I flame your favorite professional players for being scammed into buying suboptimal items by the two guys sitting in each base of Summoner's Rift. On a more serious note, the goal of the series is to educate and try to conclude if something is suboptimal or not so you can better decide in your own games. Before we start, one thing I saw last video a couple of months ago and on Twitter, Reddit was, who is this guy? Who does he think he is to know more than pro players? They're pro players for a reason. And I just wanted to quickly address this by saying that first, this appeal to authority can be actively harmful and block improvement and optimization. Pro players will mention that something feels better often as a justification. And it's easy to fall into this line of thinking when you're a pro. Any pro league player is top 0.0001% of the whole league player base, right? And they got there by relying on their instincts and feel. So it's natural that they'll use that to justify their choices. That doesn't always make it the correct choice, but it's important to recognize where the line of thinking is coming from. Anyways, moving on. Let's start with a small quiz. You are Reckless on Senna. You base with around 2,100 gold, and this is your current build, and these are the enemy items. You're looking to close out the game. What do you buy? Option A, you buy BF Sword and Elixir of Wrath. Option B, you finish Mortal Reminder. Option C, you buy Serrated Dirk and Elixir of Wrath. If you answered B, you are correct. I mentioned this in the last episode, as games go late and with everyone reaching level 18, it's normal for champions to have 80 plus armor from just base stats, and there's even quite a bit of armor itemized from the Misfits comp outside of the Azir, so the 25% armor penetration would do wonders. In this case, Reckless bought the BF Sword in the Elixir of Wrath, and he would later back again and complete the Infinity Edge, which is why I looked into this game specifically, and two other matches. I wanted to see if Infinity Edge would be a worthwhile buy for Senna. For those not aware, while most AD carries do 200% damage of a normal auto attack when they crit, Senna's critical strikes only deal 130%. Infinity Edge increases crit damage to 146.25%. So with this in mind, let's have a look at the math. We have had three Infinity Edge Senna's in the LEC so far, so that's what I looked into. I tracked their buys and looked at alternative build options, calculating the damage of an auto plus Q plus auto combo on Senna, including a Duskblade of Dragfar proc. In G2's match versus Rogue, Perks backs at 36 minutes to complete his Infinity Edge. At this point, he's at 90 missed stacks, which gives him 60% critical chance and 67.5 AD. I calculated the damage of an auto plus Q plus auto combo on the five targets he's up against. With 60% crit chance or missed, 25% from Infinity Edge and 25% from Rapid Fire Cannon, he overcaps on crit, which means he gains 3.5% lifesteal. An auto plus Q plus auto combo will do 1658 damage. On your screen, you should be seeing the damage the combo would deal post mitigation to each of the enemy champions. What if he had a Mortal Reminder instead? I removed Infinity Edge from his build and added a Mortal Reminder, as well as an Elixir of Wrath, as Mortal Reminder is 500 gold cheaper than Infinity Edge. With Mortal Reminder, he would only have 85% critical chance and would need 10 more souls to hit 100% crit. So I calculated an AA plus Q plus AA combo, assuming one auto crit, and also both autos critting, which isn't guaranteed as he's not at 100% crit chance. In both situations, the combo would do more damage to all targets, and this was especially noticeable when hitting the tankier targets. All of this doesn't mention that Senna's W and R also gain from having Mortal Reminder in the build, as they're abilities that deal physical damage. Dawning Shadow deals 500 base damage at rank 3, and has a bonus AD ratio of 100%, so having an armor penetration item is huge. In these calculations, I didn't take into account Muramano's passive damage either. This would skew results further towards favoring armor penetration items as the passive damage applies on both Senna's autos and her Q, so the combo I mentioned would apply it thrice. For reference, at level 16, it's easy for Senna to be at 2500 maximum mana, which would give her a maximum of 150 added damage on an auto attack. But Perks was also quite behind in this game, so I checked Upset's game in OG vs G2 as well. In this game, he buys an Infinity Edge at 29 minutes. At this point, he's quite ahead of his opponents who have barely itemized for any armor. 
Upset has 66 missed stacks, which means 45% crit chance. With two crit items, he's up to 95%, so I calculated the damage of the AAQ-AA combo again, assuming both autos crit, which might not happen, but it's gonna be rare. As alternative builds, I gave him a Yomu's Ghostblade and a Longsword, and a Lord Dominic's Regards and a Longsword, as these items are cheaper and would allow for the extra Longsword. Essentially, I'm trading crit chance and crit damage for lethality or armor penetration. Is it worth it? Results vary. At 70% crit chance, there's even less of a guarantee that both autos would be critical strikes. If both autos crit, the combo would do more damage with either of my proposed builds. Assuming one crit only, the IE build edges out versus Ghostblade, no pun intended, but not versus the Lord Dominic's build. Again, I want to stress that W and R damage, as well as Muramana, will also benefit from the Lethality or Armor Penetration items. So in conclusion, in most cases, Infinity Edge is not worth it. I can only see it edging out when 1. You're super ahead and the enemy doesn't have much armor. 2. You don't have enough souls so the 25% crit actually matters. And number 3. You're autoing a lot in teamfights, which is uncommon for Senna. All of these three factors happening is pretty rare, so in general I would personally recommend against building it. Lately, we have also had some farming Senna's build Berserker's Greaves. The justification from players is that it feels better, the attack windup is better, and that because Senna has a lot of AD, getting extra attacks in has a lot of value. So let's break this down. Firstly, attack windup. A champion's attack windup is the portion of the attack animation that must be completed in order to hit the target. Once the attack windup is completed, the attack goes through and you can perform other commands. A lot of marksmen have pretty low attack windups, which means knowing how to stutter step or attack move is pretty important. Corky is a great example of this as his attack windup is only 10%, meaning only 10% of the animation needs to be completed before he can issue another command and not cancel the auto. Senna's attack windup, on the other hand, is 31.25%. If you've played Senna before, you've probably felt this difference. It's very slow to get her auto animation to complete before you can move again. Getting more attack speed will decrease your windup time. I'm sure you've noticed this by just playing a level 180 carry versus a late game carry with multiple attack speed items. However, on top of already having a high attack windup, Senna has a mod of 60% on her attack windup too. This means that, let's say buying Zerks on Senna, will only feel 60% as good as it normally would on other carries. But wait, there's more. Senna also has a modified attack speed ratio. An attack speed ratio modifies the effectiveness of attack speed. If it's under your champion's base attack speed, it discourages purchasing attack speed items, and if it is higher than your champion's base attack speed, it encourages buying attack speed. This is the most defining factor for whether attack speed is good for a champion. Senna's attack speed ratio is 0.2, which means it's very discouraged to purchase attack speed on Senna. Caitlyn, for example, has a ratio of 0.568, which is why you might have heard Freak advocate for an Infinity Edge Storm Razor Essence Reaver build. You mainly buy Rapid Fire Cannon for the extra range and critical chance, and over-indexing on attack speed on Caitlyn isn't great. It's even worse on Senna, but we'll talk about Caitlyn in another episode. Both of these champions have bonus attack speed at level 1 to make it feel more normal, and have more bonus attack speed per level to make sure they feel somewhat normal as they level up, and to combat that ratio that discourages extra attack speed purchases. What you're going to see on your screen next is just a 10 second loop of two different AD carries attacking with different attack speed bonuses, difference being that Sivert doesn't have a modified ratio to discourage her from purchasing attack speed like Senna does. I know a pro AD carry player would never just stand still and attack as they would use spells or move in between autos to cancel the full animation of the attack, but this is just to show that the difference is minimal and a champion like Senna doesn't put a lot of consecutive autos in a teamfight. So as a conclusion, if you're really hell-bent on running some attack speed, take Legend Alacrity in your runes. You'll miss out on cutdown, but it's not the end of the world. On the boot side of things, you definitely have better options. Anyways, that's going to be it for this episode. Next time, we'll be taking a look at a certain mid lane pick from Shurima.